So if you get a permit to fly an airplane, you can fly it around with the rules of how you fly your private plane or how you rent a plane, as we used to try. And I can see no reason, since the industry for radio-controlled toys has been around very successfully, that there may even be guys around who have been doing it. Uh, just the, this conversation, you know, and they don't have to be our friends, or maybe they they can be our rivals. They can be our, you know. Okay. But yeah, I, I think we're, we're into something that hits us personally because we go to the base, we say, "Here's our petition," and they, they throw us on the ground. I mean, that's the bad news. But I'm thinking back that it's been there longer than we. I'm starting to imagine. In, in the airspace that's above us. I think you draw an important point as well, like who has the resources to invest in this technology and use it, right? So, you know, banks, we can imagine those institutions which we generally, you know, are already, you know, on the wrong side, just at this is another. When they do the bank, yeah. Right, another, another instrument in their arsenal, right, to, 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 to you know, ensure um, their domination. But, but the thing with the drone is, it, it, it started, at least in my, research started out with a State Department project, which means is a cover for Central Intelligence Agency. They, they, it's an interrelation, a daily relationship. And one of the secretaries of state, her name was uh, uh, Al, the first... Uh, Albright, Madeline Albright. She talked in some public discussion, it's, it's the predator. And there you guys have, you know, brought it up to date. The next generation beyond Predator, then Reaper, the next is Avenger. And think about the mindset yeah. behind this yeah. terminology. I mean, I think the mindset behind the, ter the technology and the terminology is, you know, something we have to keep going back to because as horrifying as the drones are, as nuclear weapons are, and every single development in technology, really. It's, it's the way the world is set up. And for, for us to, again, as I said, for us to be living in the biggest empire in world history with arguably you know, a military that is light years ahead of, of everyone else that sets the terms and that does what it can do just because it's big enough to do it, a very intense responsibility to understand that, you know, it, it's not only the technology we're against, right? It isn't that the drone is worse than the right. crossbow or something. It is the fact that it's able to be used and deployed now against masses of humanity and in the political structures right now that imperialism has going on. I think this is very important. The drones are represented, the people are not. There is no oversight. It's not that I want the current members of Congress necessarily to be in charge of overseeing it, and I think that that will be just, but it's clearly completely out of our purview. They're saying we're gonna do what we're gonna do. It's a secret, you all have nothing to say about it, and we aren't even gonna tell you what we do without any but the, you know, the most insulting speech by Holder. The most insulting speech. We have the right to do what we want to do. And we aren't even going to, going to go to very much length to pull a lot of international law into this and make it seem like it's really justified. It was a very basic speech. that said, like, we're going to kill what we want to kill. Yeah, they said we are basically we are the judge, jury, and executioner, right? Yes. Due process does not mean judicial process, is what they said. So um, yes. since when? I'm quite perplexed. I thought due process meant that you got an order. Oh, I forgot that whole thing. That was yeah. kind yeah. of hilarious. Yeah. 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 I mean, so what does it mean? I, I'm not quite sure. And then the other issue is that he he took a test that you learn in Civil Procedure 101, right, in order to determine how much process you want to give someone. And one of the three factors is the person's interest, the government's interest, and the risk of error if you were not to give more process. He forgot the error part. <laughs> like, butchered, you know, this is like, you know, a first year in law school would be like, hey, hey, you're missing something. 
Um, and you know, just the, the way in which air is just, there's no possibility for air, right? There's no, none. That's sound it. You know, a question came out about what we can do. Um, yeah. Ian, would you want to talk about um, our, our um, tableaus that we did at the New York State Fair just by, by Syracuse? Just very quickly, this has been our most powerful way of getting responses from people in Syracuse, and, and we've used it in upstate. We used it, it's called a tableau, which means a very silent presentation of an idea. So we have a drone. We have someone sitting under the drone at a computer with a joystick. All right, very short distance from that is rubble of a house a woman dressed as an Iraqi holding a child that is wrapped in a bloody sheet. We have two people on the ground, maybe one looking a little military with his shoes and what have you, covered by a bloody shroud. And then we have Kovac, which is a recruiter and a recruiting, shaking hands. So that's the essentially the tableau. It takes about seven people. We have two people distributing flyers, explaining it. We have a sign that addresses the full issue of the drone at Hancock Air Force, just announcing. And then each of the players has a sign on them saying who they are. An Iraqi child, a member of Al Qaeda, a member of a family who has lost someone drone attack. It's very visual. Some, essentially, it, it does draw a lot of interest. We say absolutely silent. Children aren't sure that we're real. You know, they come up and poke us. <laughs> it's hard to do. I mean, even for 20 minutes, to not move a muscle. Try not to blink. Um, it, we, we did it at the State Fair. It, it's hard because bloody shrouds and that kind of thing, people think, you know, that scares children. But I've heard some parents say, they're trying to tell you what war is. I mean, it's really quite good. So it's an easy thing to do. And it doesn't take a lot of people. If you have a good flyer, it gets attention. It's hard to get attention. And we've done it right the main entrance of the New York State Fair every August. Um, so thousands of people are streaming by. They get off the buses there and so that they see what we're doing. And we do it a number of times through the day. That's a big laugh. It is. It's, it's quite good. Yeah. Do you ever get um, like aggression or like people who are upset about it? Not aggression. Oh, okay. No, not aggression. But like people who are angry and they're like, this is important because you're being un-American. Yeah, I mean, a, a standard response is, you know, uh, bomb, them, bomb them all, bomb them back to the Stone Age. And then another much more subdued response is, well, they save lives. <laughs> it used to be, like we've done this two or three years in succession, but in previous years it was, what's a drone? Now it's, they save lives. So somehow that message is getting out there, that mantra is getting out there. We really need to combat it. We had one of Nick's drones same project, no drones, out in front of MoMA over the Christmas holidays. Stephanie was there. By the way, Stephanie is the coordinator of work on this one. And wait, she really put this together. I, um, thank in front of where? In MoMA. front of MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. There was a show called um, War at a Distance, and it was about, Whoa. tangentially, the drone war. Yeah. So we set up the drone right in front of the main. There must have been 10,000 people coming in. It was free night, Friday night. And um, Nick has refined his presentation. So he actually has a camera mounted in the nose of the drone. And then um, that is sending data to a couple of laptops that are projecting images. So people can see themselves as they are seen by the drone which ought to make people stop and think oh, for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't necessarily. And, and then 
you know, he was running four screens talking about the drone war and, you know, exposure and so forth. And the, I thought that was remarkably effective. It's going to be up at the United um, yeah. National Anti-War Committee conference next weekend in Stamford, Connecticut, where we will also be talking about drones. And Are people invited to go to that conference? <laughs> Gee, Stan. <laughs> Stanford, Connecticut, Hilton starts Friday night. UNAC.org. Right? No, UNACPeace.org. Uh, okay. Uh, at any rate, that was a sophisticated audience of art lovers, and I ran into someone who works at the UN on drones, who stood for a long time, and he said, well, I, I don't think anyone has thought about doing this before. This is rather extraordinarily that extraordinary that you're doing it, but it's not half as bad as you're showing. He said it's really much more widespread and worse than anybody can put their heads around it. I know I'm studying it. Yeah, I, I, wow. sort of my remarks and Zora's remarks, we, we emphasize the killing of civilians and so forth, and, and not so much surveillance. But the surveillance technology that the Reaper uses is just utterly extraordinary. You can see at night. You can see through clouds. It, it's um, thermal sensitive, so you can see um, if, if a if a weapon has been fired recently. You know the lingering heat it can pick up on. Um, also, the there's camera work. I think it's called the Medusa that goes like in 360 degrees. Um, so it's, it's, this, it's picking up imagery in many different directions at the same time and streaming this back to HQ. And there's so much imagery that it takes in that um, those in HQ can't keep up with it all. But you can bet that research institutes and universities are working on technology to make it assimilable, digestible. Just to say, Colonel Ann Wright has been part of our Hancock 38, and she reported two weeks ago that each drone needs to have a hundred auxiliary people looking at the what's coming back, making decisions. Each drone, so it actually takes a lot of personnel uh, involved in this. Um, I think it was 60 to 80. And the new Avenger coming out will take a hundred. I think it's been increased. But anyway, it's huge numbers of personnel involved with each drone station. Yeah, at the MoMA, um, when we were out in front of MoMA, we were there for two nights, and there was a uh, young filmmaker who did a short video of the drones, of the installation that um, Nick made, and of people coming by and their comments, of all different types of comments. And if you want to see it, it's up on the homepage of WarCriminalsWatch.org. Take one more. Um, strategies for the, I um, spend part of my, spend my summers in a county of New Jersey which has one of the, I consider one of the strangest congressmen of the Congress. And I'm wondering what would happen if we went there and spent a day at the New Jersey State Fair, which comes in August, the late August, we go there for a few days and got a table. And what would happen in this, uh, who vote, the, the Consensus of the people is ethnically 80% white, uh, and the, the other ethnic groups are small. Uh, it's mainly a uh, bedroom community. The agriculture is there, but it's uh, really small. So, you know, it's it's far right in political policy. Of course, 50% uh, of the population are women. At least, I mean, the, the census doesn't doesn't lie on that point. So, what you know? Can we go to these guys? Can we give the turn them around? Is there you know one of the uh, when we teach in front of MoMA? There's a receptive audience. They, they may not be with us. They may have a lot of money. 
uh, receptive, I consider, but how do we get the rest of the nation to recognize the fall line? I think one strategy that we're using, I mean, to say that, you know, people, I mean, I think everyone has a moral compass and can sort of see that, you know, this is wrong. But let's say that maybe that's a hard point to sell. I mean, I think the money connection is an interesting connection. Why is Ed Towns in Brooklyn on the Drone Caucus? Like, I mean, that's sort of, I mean, there's not even, in, I mean, so let's, there's not even industry in Brooklyn that would support that, right? And so, and there's Oh, a, there's one. NYU Poly. Yeah, but I'm just saying in terms of in terms of you know you know big money, it doesn't right, necessarily yeah. make that much sense. I mean, please, you can correct me if yeah, you. Yeah. No, I think every congressional district at this point has some money going into it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. even if it doesn't, it doesn't seem big, it's there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, right. Right. But how do we? But there are ways to do it. For example, Ed Towns, our congress, we're doing research on him. Right. There's been you know he. A lot of problems with the fact that he does not sufficiently represent his um, his constituency. A lot of you know that he's part of a machine. He hasn't really he's been really out of touch. So there are ways in which to wedge you know the drone issue in into local concerns of the fact that the representative is not doing their job properly. So that might be one way to. Well, I have a, another suggestion for you guys. Uh, we're going to argue the moral ground. We can argue the moral ground. So we can. Talk to persons not of my religious faith and so the judo Christ, the Christian, which most of my neighbors are, and we don't have to go any further than that. And we'll ask them to come in and discuss surveillance or rights or the right to privacy. I mean, should we try that as an approach? I mean, it's not a ground that they're going to argue. With. It's an argue, an argument. Well, yeah. plus they're Old Testament Christians. Smite <laughs> <laughs> the babies, and you know, right? <laughs> people will say, "I have nothing to hide." Yeah. Actually, right. that's yeah. the reaction. Yeah. Uh, that I have yeah. nothing to hide. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which misses the point. Those people. Yes. I yes. really think your your approach, though, in an overarching way, is incredibly important. We, look, how are we going to change the situation? In yes. This country? Left forum, okay, encouraging, we're all learning, but we can't keep talking to each other. Right. Yeah, Most of go. the time, we have to be going out to the And suffer the, fa the pains of, uh, of a mean, failure now and then. Zora's point about Ed Towns, I think it's Saturday, April 14th, that we'll be in Brooklyn, um, <laughs> in Ed Towns' purview, uh, doing a, another program about the drones, and if you all want to leave an email address, you will hear about all about the events on the drones that the world can't wait and other groups are doing. We will promote it all. But I do not want to leave, you know, surveying what we talked about for two hours. Murders, uh, you know, all of this. It is very, very discouraging. It is intimidating. I mean, I'm the first to say, you look at the weapons being arrayed against the people in the world right now, and um, we should all be very sober about it. But we came here just because we want to understand the reality that we're facing. We want to know as much as we possibly can. And we do want to grab a hold of, at least, you know, my thinking is that the primary aspect of this is to grab hold of the morality Humanity and the planet come first. We need a generation of people that are raised with that kind of ethos um, in order to create a different kind of world. All of us from whatever generation and the actions we take are important in creating that. Even if we're old and we've been at this for a while, we, we have an incredible responsibility to bring forward more people who are, are going to have this battle an important thing, so I, I hope we will stay in touch.